Hi, my name is Rachel. I'm going to show you how to completely rebuild a Marvel Shevler carburetor. The one that I'm using is off of a Ford Jubilee or 8N style tractor. If you are working on a different brand of tractor that still has a Marvel Shevler carburetor, these techniques will still apply. The first thing you need to do is take your carburetor off your tractor. So go ahead and turn off the fuel and then remove your fuel line. This one, the carburetor and the sediment bowl will come off together as one piece. That might not be the case on yours, but either way you need to take the carburetor off. Remove the air hose and take these two bolts out for the manifold. Make sure that you get a gasket in between the manifold and the top of the carburetor. On the back side of your carburetor is a contraption like this with a ball and socket. You'll see when I push forward, you can see that it kind of releases and then it snaps into it. So this is on the back of your carburetor twice for both the throttle and the choke. It just snaps onto there. When you want to release it from your tractor, pull the, the rod portion out and it'll pull right off. You may be using a different type of carburetor that is maybe off like a Massey Ferguson tractor or an Alice or John Deere that has a pin for the throttle that would just be attached here. There's a pin that's on the end of your rod. So you pull the pin out and then your rod will release. The carburetor and sediment bowl are removed from the tractor. The sediment bowl is separate from the carburetor. So now we're ready to tear it down. The first thing you want to do is take this main jet off. Uh, it is a long uh, part there, so you want to be careful that you don't bend it. It is spring-loaded as well. It pulls right out. Then you have an idle jet on the side here. This one's spring-loaded as well. You want to take that, oops, that one out. This on the side here is called the fuel inlet. You want to be careful when you take this one out in the way that you squeeze it. You don't want to crush it as it is soft brass. Just turn that. I do have it loosened up. Yours will come off uh, a little bit easier or harder. There's a filter on the end of this one, so you want to be sure that the filter comes off because sometimes that gets separated. Also, often the filter is filled with a lot of junk, so you either want to clean that really well or just replace that completely. Be sure that you removed a gasket from this top portion. It might be still in the manifold if it's on your carburetor. You definitely want to get that off so that you don't double up your gaskets when you put this back on. There's two screws up here where your throttle door is. You want to remove both of those so that we can pull that off. And then this will come right out once you have the screws removed. And then this pulls out as well. Before I pull that out, I want to show you that this one, there's not a lot of slop. I can't move that back and forth at all. If yours is sloppy, you definitely want to replace this part completely. Or if it's you know, still good, you could probably still use that. So pull that out. And then your last step for the top of the carburetor is to remove all four of these screws. Depending on what type of Marvel Shoveler carburetor you are working on, you might need to pay attention to um, the placement of these screws, as some will be longer than the others. This, one, this particular one, it doesn't matter, but on a different model of carburetor, you would want to pay attention to that. There's two screws over on this side. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and just pull that directly apart. Just pull gently as there's parts that are attached. Now that we have that apart, we'll continue on. On the top portion of the carburetor, the first part we want to take out is this float. So simply just move this spring aside, pull that out, and your float will come. Some carburetors are equipped with a spring that brings the needle out with it. You can see the spring on the end of there. Not all carburetors will have that, so if yours doesn't, just simply reach in there with a pair of pliers and pull your needle out. Then you'll want to uh, take your spring out. You can loosen it there, and then pull it completely out. Your seat does have a gasket underneath it, so you want to be sure to get that out as well. Then we can pull this uh, base gasket out. The venturi is going to come with it. This part is directional, so if you're going to put the same one back in, uh, you just want to be careful to get it back in the right way. You'll see how that came out. That's the proper way when we put it back in. Next, there's your idle jet right there, so we want to get that out so that we can Analyze that and clean through there too if we need to. That'll come completely out and that's everything you need to take off the top portion of your carburetor. 
For the bottom of your carburetor, you want to take out this emulsion tube right here. Just use a 3 8 inch deep well socket to loosen that up and then you can pull it with your fingers. It's long and it does have holes in the side. There is also a gasket that you want to be sure comes out with it. Right there you can see my gasket came out. Next you will want to work on your choke door here. If you can see when I flip it down in there, there's a couple screws that need to be removed. So you can turn those screws and they'll come out. There is a door in here. When that comes out, make sure there's a spring on it. If your um, door there doesn't have a spring, that might be the problem of why you are not having a good running tractor. Once those two screws are removed, this will just pull out with pliers. It's a little bit difficult to get out, but you just keep pulling from side to side, it will come. There we go. Okay. So here's the door you can see I was talking about, and this is the spring that's on it. It's good that it has a spring. If yours doesn't, you definitely want to put a spring back on your door when you put it back in. This will pull out once that's out. There's a spring on the end of this. This one uh, is a little bit stretched out, so we'll replace that when we put it back together so that um, your choke will operate properly. On the bottom of your carburetor, you want to take this plug out so that you can um, get cleaned up in there very well. That will probably come off hard for you. I have that loosened up so it came off easily for the video. Also, this little inspection uh, screw you want to take out as well. Once you have all those parts out, we can go ahead and clean it up. To clean your carburetor, you want to spray a ch carb and choke cleaner inside all of your jets. There's the main jet down here that you want to spray. Also up here is your idle jet. Spray both of those. There is another jet underneath your main jet that you want to try to get to there. You can also get to it from the bottom. Flip that over and blow through your plug. Also your inspection door. You want to spray until it comes out the other end clean. Uh, additionally, on the top, go ahead and spray where your main jet goes in, your screw goes in there, and also your idle jet over here on the side. Another uh, good method, if you have a pick like this one, is to use that down here. Be sure to get that all cleaned out completely. Also, if there's any type of sediment down here, uh, it might be white or rust colored, you want to use maybe a wire brush or anything like that use your uh, carbon choke cleaner to clean it out very thoroughly. Once you have it all wet from the cleaner, you want to spray it out with a, a blow nozzle like this one. You spray it out with this. You're trying to get it completely dry. Another way that you can uh, clean out your carburetor is you can use a soak tank. If you have access to that, that's an excellent method. Also, you can put your parts inside a parts cleaner and wash them in there. You can buy a carburetor cleaner from any type of auto parts store. Make sure that you get your carburetor very thoroughly clean. That's going to be the secret to your success is having a clean carburetor. Now that my carburetor is completely clean, we're ready to put it back together. Let's go ahead and assemble the choke. So the first thing you need to do is insert your choke door onto your lever. I have it pulled out of the carburetor so that you can see easier, but you would normally assemble this, you have to assemble this inside the carburetor. So take a pair of needle nose pliers and put it underneath the spring and in between the door and the flap, and then wrap it around your choke lever. You'll see that I have a portion, the door is in between the lever there, and then the flap is on the outside. So you push that down, so that it wraps around there, and then you'll see that the screw holes will line up. Uh, some people like to, when this is in the carburetor, they like to put this on and then put the spring on there. They just, you know, that snaps off with a pair of needle nose pliers. I don't like to do it that way. I find that it's easier to do it that way, but whatever way works for you is fine, just as long as it all gets in there. Um, this is the most challenging part of the carburetor, in my opinion, so stick with it. You can do it, and you'll get through it. Also notice that I have my spring on the end of the lever here, and you'll see that it is inserted onto my carburetor here. Uh, this is a little bit tricky to wrap around there too, but it's just so that your choke will release properly. Notice that there is a notch in the lever that matches the bottom of the carburetor. That will help you get your configuration right so that your uh, spring there and lever works properly. You see that that just slides on there and snaps on there. So you can go ahead and insert your uh, choke door 
onto your lever with a pair of needle nose pliers, you can just drop that right in there. I'm tightening the screws here on my uh, choke door. You'll see that I did get the door in there, the springs on it, the levers functioning properly, and so we are ready to move on. The next thing you want to put back in is your plug in the bottom. That just screws in, as well as this little screw, which is for your drain. It's a little bit harder to get started. Tighten both of these up really well, especially this one. It's be really tight. Okay, and then on this portion, you want to put your emulsion valve back in. Do do make sure that it has the gasket on there. That just drops in there, screws in, and then tighten it up with a socket. On the top portion of your carburetor, you want to go ahead and put your seat in. There's a gasket underneath there, so make sure you have a gasket underneath yours. Screw it in tightly. It does need to fit snugly. There we go. Next, you want to put your idle jet in there. I did already start it, but you would probably want to use a self-starting screwdriver and then tighten it up in there with a regular screwdriver. Next, we'll drop our needle into there. If you're using this kit from Steiner, it will have a spring on it. The uh, top portion of this, um, where the hooks are, will go towards the top. Then you just drop the needle down into the seat like that. Next, we'll want to put our gasket on. I do have the Venturi already in here, and you'll see um, which way I have it in there, and it just drops right into that portion. Then we'll put the float on. The float goes in and wraps around that spring, which should be facing that way. You'll be able to see here once I get it on that that spring wraps around the float. Let's try it this way. So you should see on the top of the float that you just see that portion. Then the needle drops in to the seat. There we go. Okay, now let's put this pin in there to hold the float on. Just slides through there. Make sure that you have your pin centered on either end so that when you put your cap on, it's correct. Next, you'll want to set the float. It should set just about diagonally across with the, the portion of your carburetor. Um, if it needs to be bent at all, you can just use a pair of needle nose pliers to bend it into place. Mine looks pretty good the way it is, and you might need to adjust yours before you uh, assemble it completely. I'm going to put the two parts of my carburetor together. So this is all together, and you just set that on top of there. You'll feel it drop in. Mostly that Venturi is going to be what you feel most drop in. Uh, then you put it together and put these four screws down in there, tighten those all up. there. Okay, so you want to put all four screws in. I'm not going to put the other two just for sake of time, so you don't have to watch me do that because you know I can. <laughs> and then here we'll put the, drop the main jet down in there. Be very careful when you drop this main jet in there to get it straight. You don't want it to bend that in any way. And then screw that all the way down. Screw it until it um, bottoms out, until you can't screw anymore, which I'll get to in just a minute here. Now I'm bottomed out, you see where it's at? Then I want to turn it out one, two, 
two complete turns. That way when you start it up, it should be close to being adjusted properly. Then you also want to screw your idle jet in. That one has a spring on it as well, so don't forget that. Screw that one in all the way. Until it stops, and then you'll screw this one out just one turn. So we got two turns on the main jet, and then one turn out on the idle jet. The screws tighten, so now let's put our fuel inlet in. Remember that you needed to clean out this filter, and then just go ahead and insert it in there. I'm going to be that uh, facing upwards so that we can easily attach that. Next, we'll work on the throttle. I already have uh, part of my throttle assembled here. I did put a felt here, as well as my screw and spring, and I base this level of uh, screwing in my screw on the last one. I tried to match that so that when it's running, it will uh, hopefully not need too much adjustment. So once you have that in there, you can just insert that into your carburetor here, turn this upwards, and then place your door on there. Line up the screw holes as it drops in there, and then place both of your screws in there. I just finished putting the carburetor back on the tractor here. Make sure that when you put yours on that this air tube is properly connected because you don't want any dirt to get into your carburetor. Also make sure that your fuel line is functioning and flowing properly. There is a filter up near your gas tank that you'll want to check as well as there's a filter like this one at the top of your sediment bowl that you want to make sure it is there and is cleaned out. You tighten the sediment bowl at the bottom of the bowl. Uh, attach your carburetor up here by the manifold. Make sure that, that gasket got in between those two pieces. Also put your choke and throttle cables back on and then you are ready to start your tractor. We're going to do some fine tuning to the idle jet. So you can take a screwdriver and turn this idle jet slightly just to fine tune your tractor so that it runs smooth. I'm going to start it up. You'll hear it run properly. Then I'm going to turn that so that you will hear the flutter in the engine so you know what that sounds like. And then we'll tune it back to where it needs to be. flutter down there, you don't want your tractor to sound like that at all. So keep tuning this idle jet, it's easy to do with a screwdriver, and get your tractor running properly. With your main jet, you can adjust that as well to help your tractor run properly. If your tractor is blowing out a lot of black smoke, you can turn that jet in just about half a turn and that should take away your smoke. If it is running lean, you can turn it out an extra half a turn from the original two turns that we started with when we had the carburetor on the bench. And that should help it run more properly at uh, full speed. So let's start this tractor up and see how it does. Make sure that your tractor is in neutral every time you start it. too and that this repair was uh, helpful to you so that you're able to successfully repair your carburetor.